Hello everyone, Kevin here, and I'm back again with another video to show you how to install our TD40 sensor or our top-down sensor for non-pressurized tanks. Before we actually get to the physical installation of our sensor on our tank, we gotta make sure we have the right tools to make sure this is a successful installation. So let's go through what we have here in front of us. You're gonna need either a hex screw, Allen wrench, or a Phillips head screwdriver, depending on which TD40 you have. We've got our TD40 kit, and depending on whether or not your tank is level or not, you may have purchased the Mopeka leveling kit to go along with your TD40. Make sure you also have your smartphone handy and your Copilot app downloaded and your ID ready to go. If you don't have an ID, make sure you reach out to your Mopeka licensed distributor or reach out to Mopeka at support at mopeka.com. Now that we've made sure that we have proper tools for the installation, let's go through what's in our kit and put our sensors together. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and grab our Mopeka TD40. In the box, you're going to find that there is an antenna. You may have a remote antenna. The installation instructions will still be the same, but we're going to go ahead and take our remote antenna and we're going to locate the antenna port. We're going to go ahead and screw this in. You don't need a wrench. Just screw it in hand tightened. Next thing we're going to see in our kit with our TD40 is our two AAA, uh, AA lithium ion batteries. And then we have a 3M chemical bonding stick. This will be used if your tank that you're installing this on doesn't have a two inch port, in which case we're gonna use the chemical bonding ring here at the bottom of the sensor to mount this on a tank. If you bought a leveling kit and you open that up, you're gonna see that we have three leveling rings that'll turn around and offset the tilt of the tank and where you install the sensor. This too will also come with a chemical bonding 3M stick that all you need to do is remove the padding and apply. Now that we've turned around and gone through the kit and all the components of our kit, and we've installed the antenna, the next step is to open up the sensor and install the batteries. So go ahead and grab your Phillips head or Allen wrench, depending on the type of screw that's in your sensor, and go ahead and remove this. Be careful, because it is a small screw and you don't want to drop it on the ground, make sure you put it to the side. Next thing we're going to do is very firmly but gently push open the lid. Don't worry if it, it seems a little tight. The sensor it does have a, an environmentally protection seal here to keep it waterproof. Now that I've got it open, we have access to the battery compartment. So now we're going to take our two lithium ion ultimate uh, AA batteries. We're going to go ahead and install them. It's clearly marked plus and minus, so we're going to go ahead and put this in. Once I put it in, I should be greeted with two beeps. There you go. This is signifying that the sensor is now getting power and it's active. This is a cellular version. In the next 60 seconds, I should get three more beeps that'll tell me that the sensor is now connected to a cellular network in the area and communicating with the Mopeka cloud. There we go. We got our three beeps. Now let's go ahead and close it up. Make sure we push down firmly, grab our screw and our Allen wrench. Let's go ahead and get this tightened down. Hand tighten, you do not need a drill. Okay, so now the sensor is, is ready to go, and now we can go ahead and open up our Copilot app. Before we actually get into the installation and talking about the hardware, it's important to understand where is the right spot on water tanks. So we have one here where uh, we're gonna do our installation on today. For this particular type of installation, uh, we wanna be as close to center as possible. We're gonna look for a flat level spot on the top of the tank. We want to make sure that we're not on a portion of the tank that is not level and at an angle. We also want to make sure we're not against the wall. Okay, The sonar cone is going to want to spread out and if you're close to a wall or you're in at an angle it will affect the accuracy as well as the uh, quality of signal within the tank. On this type of water tank or non-pressurized tank, very similar dynamic supply. We want to make sure that we're not on the angle of the tank as you can see here. We want to make sure that we're up on a level spot of the tank. We also want to make sure that we're away from the wall. All those components will affect the quality installation. So the best spot on water tanks or any non-pressurized tank is going to be at the top of it, at a level spot, and away from any mechanicals. Now, these particular tanks don't have any floats or any piping, 
But once again, just like our propane sensors, you want to make sure that you're away from any of those mechanicals within the tank so you have a clear picture down into the top of whatever commodity you are measuring. The next step is to get your TD40 ready to be installed through the Mopeka Copilot app. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our smartphone or smart device and I'm going to go ahead and start the Mopeka Copilot app. You'll notice that once it's started, there is an add device button. We're going to go ahead and hit that. And what that will do is that will activate the camera on your phone and you're going to scan the QRC code on the side of the unit. That will immediately turn around and push us to the next step, which is where the sensor and the phone will be talking to make sure that the batteries are installed properly. Once that's done, we'll get a, be able to move to the next step here. This sometimes can take up to 30 to 60 seconds, so please be patient. Once the sensor and the phone is now talked, it says the batteries are connected. The next button down the bottom right hand corner has gone from light green to dark green, signifying that we can move to the next step. Let's go ahead and hit next. Next thing we were presented with is the device information screen. So everything that has a red asterisk is a required field. You'll also notice that in the bottom right hand corner, the light green next button, um, we can't move to the next step until we've completed everything here. So we're going to work from top to bottom today. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to device name and I'm going to click in there. And our guidance is usually give it a customer name and a designation. So in this case, I'm going to call it the Jaffe water tank. Okay. The device address, address, which is the field right below, is not the actual physical location of the sensor. This is the serial number or device address, right, that's unique to this sensor. This is pre-filled based on you scanning the QRC code on the side of the sensor. The next one is our tank number. Um, you can use this either as the designated tank 1, tank 2. We have some customers who use this to put in asset numbers or serial numbers of their tanks. For today's purpose, we're just going to put one, two, three, four, and hit done. And now we're going to go down to the next one, which is asset type. I'm going to go ahead and click in there, and that's going to present me with a drop down. Um, I have a choice of either it's a company bulk inventory, it's either a company owned tank or a customer owned tank. Now, this tank is here in our yard, so we're going to put company owned, which allows us now to go to the commodity screen here. And if I click in there, I get a list of all the commodities that we're going to be that the sensor can work on. We're going to do water today as this is a water tank. Now that I've actually filled in all the required fields, you'll notice that the next button has gone from light green to dark green, signifying that we've completed all our tasks and we can go to the next screen. So let's go ahead and hit next. Now we're presented with the dealer information and the tank information screen. Once again, everything with a red asterisk is something that is required in order to move on. Now, for the sake of this, most likely your, dealers, your dealer field will be pre-filled, but if not, click in on it. And we've set up Bob's propane and gas for today's demo. Click on that, that's now filled in the dealer information. For the tank size and type, I can go ahead and click in there. And it's, we're presented with certain tank profiles that we've already preloaded into the system. However, if none of those are available, you can turn around and click out of this and hit add. And I'm going to go ahead and bring up the new tank profile page. And once again, everything with a red asterisk is required. You'll notice that the dealer information has already been pre-filled based on previous screens. The tank label, what we like to do is we like to give it some sort of designation in terms of how big it is um, and maybe what the diameter is. So we're going to say this is a uh, 250 gallon um, and it is a, uh, we're going to call it a, uh, a, a six foot tank. Okay. Um, with that being said, we now move on to the next screen, which is our max liquid height and overall height. And what the, we want those to be is those should be um, what is the inside diameter. Now I'm screwing this down right into the tank, so I'm not going to be offset at all. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually put in the overall height which is going to be in 72 inches since this is non-pressurized and the max liquid height will be the same height. Okay. Volume, I'm going to say this is 250 gallons and it is a vertical tank. Okay. 
Once I've done all this, I can go ahead and hit save at the top right hand corner. And that brings me back to my previous screen and now that tank information is now attached to this device. Um, now, now I'm going to go down to the branch, click into the branch, and for the sake of this example, we're going to use the east branch today, but branches are set up usually by your dealer administrator, and if they're not there, please contact them directly. Okay, and now we have our customer. By clicking into the customer screen, I had Bill Johnson already you know, set up into the system for the sake of this demo. However, if you want to put a customer in on the fly, you would hit the add button and you'll get the new customer screen where you'll put in their name, their email address, phone number, billing address. Um, you'll put in any notes that you might have. The dealer information will already pre-fill and the branch information you can go ahead and select. Okay, But once that's done, you would hit save and that would now enter a customer into the system. We're going to go ahead and hit cancel and we're going to use today's demo, which is Bill Johnson. Now that I've filled in all the uh, fields that have a red dot, um, the next button now is dark green, allowing us to go to the next step. The next step is going to talk about syncing the, the uh, sensor with the cellular. I've, it's already happened when we put the batteries in, and it's telling us that we're connected to T-Mobile and we have full bars in this area. Um, in order, since this has already been done, the next button is now dark red, green, and we can move to the next step. So now it's going to ask me whether or not we're going to be using a threaded install or we're going to use an adhesive install. So today, um, our tank does not have a two inch threaded port. So we're going to use adhesive. I'm going to click on that and it's going to give us a quick little video of um, how we drill a hole if we need to drill one. Okay, and it gives you a little video and how that'll sit in there. We're going to hit next. And that's going to bring us now to the installation screen. And I'm going to go ahead and put this into the tank. And we're going to turn it until we're fairly level. And what will end up happening is the green dots will become level and the quality will quickly go up once we're in the right spot. And there we are. And now that we've met the levelness and the quality requirements, we now can hit next. Okay. Now it's going to say take the sensor out, and what we're going to do is we're going to put the 3M primer around the edge of the tank so that when we pull off the adhesive strip that is on the underside of the sensor, it will chemically bond. Let's go ahead and hit next. Now we're going to take off the adhesive, as you can see in the video, and we're going to go ahead and install it right down into our tank. It's going to bring us back to the leveler and the quality to make sure that we're still in a good spot, and we are, which allows us to hit next and go to the next screen. And what we're going to get here at the end is it's going to verify the measurements. It's going to take up to 90 seconds, and it's going to read what's in that tank, and all that we ask now is to confirm what the sensor is reading compared to what you're seeing either on your gauge or what you know happens to be in your tank. But this can take several minutes, so please be patient. During this time, your Mopeka sensor will be flooding the tank with sonar to get, make sure it gets a good accurate reading. Now let's come back here of our 250 gallon tank. It's telling us there's 157 gallons or 62.8%. We know exactly what happens to be in this tank and this is, this is spot on. So I'm gonna hit, hit confirm details. And I'm gonna hit next and we are done. I can go back to my homepage and we are good to go. Now that our sensor is completely installed, it should show up in your Copilot app as well as the Mopeka.cloud. That's it, we're finished. So thank you for your time, and I hope this was helpful.